Hello, I'm Russ Abbott. Welcome to another edition of Tattoo Smart Live. It has been way too long since the last time we were here together, so I am excited to be back. I'm super excited to have Mike Stockings, the UK tattooer specializing in neo-traditional. And Mike just launched his new set, Animal Crackers Volume 1 with Tattoo Smart today. And we are going to take a look inside the set with Mike. We're going to see everything that's in the box. And Mike is going to take us through his unique workflow in Procreate. So we are going to see exactly how he renders his designs and how he makes it magic. So I before we get to Mike, I want to um, just kind of catch you up on a few things that have been happening with Tattoo Smart. First, we have our new website. It was quite a bit of work to get to this point. We wanted to bring you guys a website that was faster and more well thought out with a great user experience. And I think we've accomplished all of those things. So if you haven't been to tattoosmart.com in a little while, if you haven't experienced the new site, I hope you'll go check it out. We have eliminated some of the older products. Um, we no longer have some of the old um, color tools the, uh, the ink swatches, those types of things. It had just been too long since I had been able to update those products and I, I just didn't want to have them on the site anymore. There may come a time where we'll bring that back with new updates, but for now, we're sticking with mostly Procreate brush sets at this point. Um, we have divided and recategorized all of the products into some different categories to try to make it a little bit easier to understand what you're getting when you, when you get a set from us. So. At this point, we have brush sets, which are going to be like our natural media sets, um, things like the spit shade set or even the needle set. So brushes that replicate actual natural media on the iPad. And then we have our flash stamps, which is the kind of set that Mike did here with Animal Crackers. And flash set stamps are going to be just ready-made designs, clean line drawings that you can use right away as reference or as actual tattoos that are ready to go. Another product category that you'll see is the toolkits. So these are going to be products like Girl Head or the Rose Kit or the Snake Kit. These are still brush sets. I mean, they're all Procreate brush sets, really. But toolkits are different because they don't contain complete designs. They contain tools that allow you to create designs by adding several elements together. So all of these things work in a complete system in Procreate, and they import directly into your iPad. It's all very easy. You're not going to have any import issues anymore with the new site. You can you can use any browser that you want. Um, as long as you're on your iPad when you install it, you can use Chrome or you can use Safari. So things are really working a lot better now with the site, and we've got some other great new things coming. Um, this is just the beginning, really. So Tattoo Smart is coming with a lot of incredible stuff this year and into the next year. So we've got a lot of exciting things on the horizon. So I don't want to take up too much of your time talking about Tattoo Smart. I'd like to get to the fun stuff. So I'm going to go ahead and bring Mike Stockings in. Let's do, let's hey. split screen. There you are. Hey, Mike. Hey, how are you doing, Russ? I'm doing great. Thanks for joining me today. This is super exciting, man. I've been so excited to, uh, ever since the beginning of us talking about this set, I thought, man, we've got to try to do a live stream with Mike because... The first time that I even saw you doing stuff in Procreate was on your Instagram. I noticed that you were showing tutorials, like showing these amazing little like ideas and, and quick tips and, um, and also, you know, bringing people over into your Patreon at the time. But I knew when I saw what you were doing that I had to reach out and we had to try to connect. So, you know, I was really thrilled that you agreed to, uh, to make this set with us. Um, so here we have it. Animal Crackers. It's done. How yeah, was it that you reached out? Yeah, it was great. It was really good to work with you guys. Yes, yeah, it, it was a fun project. And um, yeah, we decided to show some people. Right on. Yeah, so we ended up doing 100 different animal heads, basically, mostly heads. Some are full bodies, right? So yeah, we'll get in and, uh, and take a look at what's in there. Um, you know, in case some of our viewers aren't familiar with your work, I wanted to ask if you could maybe show us some of what you do, um, some tattoos in the skin. Are you prepared to uh, throw the iPad view on and show it off? Yeah. Okay, let's see if we can bring that in here. 
switch this up. I missed right, the stuff I did recently. Uh, awesome. Wow, man. I love the combination of those two, like that mint green that you used as the, the highlight and the color in the eyes. It's that, that yeah, it's nice color. to kind of separate that green. hulky look as well with the greens and like yeah. to add a bit was almost siding on like blue, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, wow. Look at that. A unicorn. I was pretty happy with that. Yeah, that's beautiful. with the you rainbow. Really yeah, you did such a good job of capturing the whiteness of the unicorn with you know with using all those really cool grays, um, but also yeah. leaving plenty of skin. That's that's key, right? And then you know warming yeah, up the muzzle and uh, the pink around the eyes is really a nice touch. Yeah, it's it's kind of like a a good use of black in just the right places to make it appear white. Yeah, it's a nice like. That's touch. brilliant. Oh wow fox mushroom the glowy mushroom amazing my work changes like mm -hmm. tattoo to tattoo really you know which i enjoy i enjoy you know doing different things like and then i'll do something super super kind of trad links you know yeah i mean this is the exact kind of stuff that's in the brush set so yeah it's cool to see how you how you choose to color it in and keep it interesting Oh, wow. Yeah, that's like the one we're going to render out today, like the baby version of it. Yeah, it is. <laughs> awesome. I think this this is a different type of cat, though. I can't remember. Oh, is it? Yeah. It's called an ocelot, I think. Can we talk a little bit about your um, your technique just a bit? Um, I don't want to get too technical, but um, do you, you know, what brand of ink do you prefer? Um, I use Radiant Colors. Okay. Um, I've used them for a while. I actually have an ink set coming out with them soon. Oh really? Um, so do? yeah, I've, I've kind of dropped all my favorite colors in a tin. So um, yeah, they'll be they'll be kind of they're not, they're not like specified inks that I've mixed myself. They're already colors that they have, but uh, they're ones that I use. Okay, so you've just taken some of what they already had and, and sort of limited the palette to what you actually prefer. Yeah. yeah so there's nice. a lot of like cutting kind of. I've put a lot of cutting kind of colors in there, like you know some cold grays and cold mint greens and stuff so it's like there's a lot of colors that i can i'll mix in between to go from like say from black to white there might be a step a hidden step in between that kind of separates mm. from just going black to skin you know um right yeah little mixing kind of tips like that in there, but that's great do you know when that's going to come out nope <laughs> <laughs> But yeah. I'll put it on my Instagram, so sure. yeah, I'm sure. Awesome. We'll look forward to that. Yeah, let's take a look inside the uh, the set and see what's in Animal Crackers. Right. So this is what Animal Crackers looks like on the iPad. So here it is. Here's all the animals here. We've got really from everything. Like, we've got some birds. Let's get rid of these. Got some birds, we've got some bears. I think this is actually kind of the start of the one. We've got a nice mix of front facing animals and different views, right? So there's front some three quarter views, some views. side profiles. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I'm just going mad now. Some side profiles. Yeah. That's super tough. some cats <laughs> fluffy cats these might be the first cats on tattoo smart other than oh yeah you know, yeah i mean at least the, the the small house cats skinless cat i oh, would not skinless cats furless cats so look a little more kind of a with a little with egyptian edge to them yeah some apes Oh, hell yeah. Mina looking ape. <laughs> you got the whole range. Then we go from snakes. Nice. Mean cobras. Full bodied. Hell yeah. Um, 
to see some crabs. Ooh. Oh, double crab. Nice. It's so cool that you can just touch it <laughs> and it's just there. Right. Just bang, dinosaur head. There you go. Nice. I know you haven't had this set in your hands long enough to really try it out at the shop, but do you think that you will use it in consults with some of your clients? Yeah, definitely. Especially like to, you know, you can kind of display, I like to take pictures of people's arms, you know, when they're coming for a consultation or, or wherever they're having the tattoo, you know, if it's deemed not too personal, but, um, it would be nice to just, you know, you get the map in, but sometimes I use you know, your body maps. From the tattoo smart and yeah, then just you can just layer these on right. which would just be great so you know someone's coming in for a dinosaur sleeve you could you know say oh we do this at the top and then kind of kind of puts a client at ease sure. doesn't it, thinking you're ahead of the game would you mind demoing that show me what you do with protoplast let's say here we've got like this And then we can go back to animal crackers and can go, okay, right, well, this dog. Oops, I've done this on the same layer. Yeah, this is exactly the workflow that, you know, I think everyone should be using more often either on these protoplast models or on photos of their client you know just if, if you imagine having like an entire library of tattoo smart stamps you know yeah. it becomes really easy to go oh yeah i know what you're what you're looking for we have that right over here hold on you know let's just try it out really quick and see if you like the size see if you like the placement and then we can yeah. customize it and do our thing with it from there yeah, because then it can just be like, you know, I could draw some backgrounds through or, you know, do right. some shapes around that kind of put everything in perspective or, you know, flower here, flower here. Right. Yeah, it's and crazy then, how quick you can start to visualize something. Yeah, especially for a client, because I think when a client comes in, they, they know they want to get a tattoo, but then it's kind of hard to visualize if you don't have much of a background in art i guess or some some of my customers say to me like they're open with i'm not very creative you know so then i have to kind of fill the gaps for them but then a process like that it really brings someone around to going oh okay like you know i can see i can see what you're talking about now you know exactly a little bit of thunder some full bodied birds. That's a good one. It's cool for like a forearm or something that could work. Crawling down. Top of the arm. Three eyed fox. Into that one. More foxes. I like how there's a nice mix of cute and cuddly animals and ferocious yeah. animals too. Yeah. <laughs> it's around the ones the little evil goat. Still cute though. Yeah. <laughs> Somehow it's evil and cute at the same time. Yeah. <laughs> Aggressive. Forward facing gorillas, never seen so much in tattoos, I would say. Yeah. To horses. Nice. That was just the right pose for one of those narrow body parts, right? Like a like a forearm or something like that. Yeah. Yeah, on that past you would work. Yeah. yeah. a lot going on in the chat room this is my first time looking at it let me scan through here and uh throw some of the chats up slave to ink one hello my guys hello 
Slave to Ink One looks so dope. Thank you. Jason says it's a great site with tools. Thanks, Jason. Muscle and fire. Thanks. Jackalope. Do we have any more physical? James Penza, we do not have any more physical color wheels in stock. Sorry I missed your message on Facebook. I don't do a very good job of answering my Facebook messages. Sorry about that. Thanks for showing up for the live stream. I think that your best bet is to go with the digital version of the Abbott color wheel. And you can print it out and you can get all the functionality that you could have gotten from it. So I think the digital version is good. I think this is what we'll illustrate today. Oh, yeah, this is the one we're gonna color in. Yeah. Lobster. Lobsters are cool looking. I like the blue ones. Tiffy baboon. The mandrill. Hell yeah. So it's after awesome. drawing a hundred different animals, Mike, how do you feel about yourself? Do you feel like you're better at drawing animals at this point or are you sick of it? Where are we at? I, I, animals is for me is one of those ones where I don't get sick of doing, I don't think. There's, there's certain ones that are harder, like I would say snakes and octopuses for me yeah. are like the hard one. You know, I do like, I don't know, maybe it's just a, it might be just a flow thing. There's a lot more to going on, isn't there, you know? Right. But no, it doesn't stop love for making them. Oh, wow. That was a cool one. The uh, ranting. I can't wait to see some, some people kind of render these out and use them as tattoos. It's a two for one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I just found out today that there were 101 brushes in the set. Yeah. I I don't know where the one come from. I think it was because <laughs> actually, I think it was because I did, I thought that I did one less snake to do the owl and the snake. Mm. But then I obviously haven't. There's an there's a extra one in there. Fair enough. That's a good one. Yeah, a little bit different as well. Though I've tried to keep them different each, each one um, for the animals. So, like this one was a little bit more like kind of fine, like fine lined, and could even work for like a black and grey. Yeah, totally. You know, um, but then a bit more heavier. Yeah. Nice panda. <laughs> it's kind of hard to make pandas look aggressive because they're so cute. But... <laughs> <laughs> See, like this is an example, like panther, mm -hmm. kind of, I guess, like natural looking could work for like a black and gray or um, something to add on to. And then, you know, a lot more traditional looking. Right. And then again, like a kind of neo traddy look. Yeah, we've really covered quite a wide range of animals. Oh, yeah, this is like a full composition here. Yeah. That's nice of you to throw some stuff like that in there just to show people how they can kind of explore 
combining elements together. Especially if you have other yeah. brush sets in the brand, yeah, there's a lot of stamps definitely. in there. You can literally, you because then you get to the point you can stamp this down and then stamp an eye down, stamp a, mm -hmm. you know, um, some of the roses down and stuff, and you can really start to put your own thing into it. You know. Yeah. Man, people are going to love this. It's a really impressive set. I was really enjoying just seeing like, you know, two or three drawings showing up at a time as you would uh, knock them out. It's, it's always a treat to see what was new from Mike Stockings. <laughs> Thank you. Even the rooster's getting in. Yeah. Some sharks. Nice. Kind of a, a little bit more of composition in that one, but. Nice, yeah. That looks like a hand tattoo waiting to happen. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe a bit of like a zombie shark almost. Whoa. Yeah, I don't think that's anatomically correct, unless it's just swallowed something with it, and that's its tail sticking out. <laughs> Either way, you want to look at it. It's like a kind of like venom shark. Yeah. Small snakes. That's a good one. Crazy tongues. Snow leopard. Also, one that you don't see angry too much. It's kind of a little yeah, it's bit an interesting like pose, yeah. And what was your process for creating these? Do you um, just grab a few different photo references and then kind of work on yeah. top of them and sort of find your lines and stylize? Or For some of them, yes. So some of them are, I will work from like wildlife photography. So then a lot of it comes into like the correct pose and mm -hmm. um uh, and I guess that go, comes down to the photo. But then, obviously, all the time, you can't get the poses that you want. And with different styles, um, if I want something to look more realistic, I would use a photo reference. But then if I want something to look more stylized, um, I will go for using, like, a... I'll sketch it from from the beginning, you know? So a pose like this at the start, you know, I'll create through like, I, I mean, I could show you, but it'd take a while, but um, like circles and shapes that will kind of build up mm -hmm. um, and then working from like an image of the, uh, like say in this instance, the, the stag, I had a statue that I could see, but it wasn't in the kind of correct pose, but it had the kind of nice facial features. Like this eye was kind of drawn from the statue, you know? Um, I will get the proportions right and then try and see the other side almost, you know, what the, the statue isn't showing. Um, so a little bit of both, a little bit of both. Like there, there is a lot of reference from photography in the set. Um, and again, it's the same with the drawing styles. That it's, it's different each one. This could be a, like a cool torso up. Oh, Imagine yeah. like a neckline, like, oh, <laughs> you know, like a, a neckline here and some yeah, shoulder totally. blades. Totally. That's super elegant. I like that framing with the circle on half of it. Yeah, and it kind of leaves space for like, you know, if, if you want to kind of add a background, you can imagine like, you know, say with something like this, you can have like, you know, some, I'll, I'll draw like spaces for reeds or, you know, mm -hmm. that can kind mm -hmm. of frame the piece, come out or like right. a, a line in the background where you can kind of see like a shoreline, mm -hmm. you know, and you can kind of start the grass there and then do like the water reflection to be the color of the sky, you know, you know, it's kind of left for the imagination, I guess. Yeah. All right. What do you say we um, show your illustration process? 
go through yeah. that uh, leopard number three and color it in. Okay. This you told me this earlier that it takes you uh, maybe about an hour to do it right. How do you feel about the hour long version right now? Yeah, I mean, it might take less. Who knows? <laughs> yeah. So, Russ, do you want me to run through like a explanation of kind of what I'm doing or? Yeah, no, I think people really appreciate um, seeing if there's any thing about your process that they can pick up some techniques and tricks from. I'm sure I'm going to learn something, too. So um, I'll just uh, if you feel like talking, you can you can talk. And if I feel like you're not talking, I'll just turn the music up a little bit so people can uh, kind of zone out and get into it and watch what you're doing. And if I have any questions, I'll speak up. But uh, yeah, man, knock yourself out. OK, cool. I'll, I'll also probably check in the chat room too and sort of communicate with everybody. Yeah, that's fine. Nice. Right. So every, let me get rid of these. Let me get a clean slate so you can see. So we've got the, the brush, uh, the brush stamp. So I've created it on one layer. I will always create a layer and we always work underneath and see, cause if we, create something that's on the top, it's going to go straight over the straight over the design, right? A technical pen. I'll use for this first bit, I'll select like a medium kind of color for how we would want the the leopard to be. I kind of try to work this like a mid tone. So we've got highlights and our darkest point. So this is kind of the long winded bit where I'll draw around elements that I don't want to be colored. Just carefully going around areas. I try to keep the drawing as high up as I can, but some bits I might have to sneak in. I noticed that you just cut through the ear. Was that just where the edge of the that color will be as it transitions to the ear? Yeah, so I'll get onto that because it will create the solid color here and I'll rub parts out of what I've kind of created. So yeah. once I get round it, once I drop everything to be solid, it's kind of a solid base to work from. Right. Just running right through those whiskers, right? Are you going to erase those out or color on top of them? Or Yeah, I'll erase them out okay. and create a new layer that will go. Well, I, you know, always just create a, a layer on top. Right. Let's see. Yeah. So we've got okay. one color. Mm -hmm. Soft brush for my eraser. I'm just going to kind of fan out some little bits here, just gently. Right. So, this layer now, we can work through our tones through the whole piece. So, I'm going to click on the layer. I've selected alpha lock. This will lock the color. What I mean by that is if I go to draw in it now, say so I get an airbrush, I'll go to a dark color. It won't spread anywhere else on the page. It will just be 
on the design. Alpha lock is such an essential method and it seems like almost no one knows about it. So I'm glad you're doing that today. When I, I, I tell some eyes that, you know, if they might stay at the shop or something, I'll show them and they're like, you've just saved me so much time. <laughs> I'm glad. <laughs> right. So really, I just start building up some of the areas with the tone. So this is where I can kind of get, you know, interesting with kind of colors to pick. Like it would be cool to kind of do. Like Was there some, some... Some, some easy logic to how you chose this darker brown color? Did you just kind of shift over on the color selector in the in the direction of yeah. black or something like that? And, and yeah, the great thing is like, cause it's going to save my history here. So I can kind of right. use that in between. So I haven't, I've, I shift went from middle. So then I've shifted down, you know, yeah. mm -hmm. get my history back on my brush. And I'm trying to keep like a, a visual kind of point between the colors. Sure. Um, to kind of remember the, uh, the darkness. So, when you I'm relate that back to the uh, the tattoo inks that you that you prefer to use. Like, would you be using a different bottle of color here, or taking that that base color and adding, say, black or a darker gray to it? Yeah, that's that it. Exactly. It? I'll do the, I do actually do the same. I'll pick a stable color for the say if I'm doing a rose, mm -hmm. I'll pick a gr um, a red that I want to be the middle red. And then I'll darken it and lighten it either side, but it'll be still be from that same bottle of red. And mm -hmm. almost the reason why I do that is because like, I know that ink will work as well, that color. Mm -hmm. So um, I like to keep them, you know, I know that it works so I can pick it up and use it all the time instead of experimenting too much with a client, you know? Sure, yeah. It makes it a little easier to know Oh yeah, that was probably this color because, you, you know, I, I certainly would suffer from that. I keep really detailed notes about the palette I use in every tattoo because I have like every color in my cabinet. So if I don't, I'm not going to know. Like once I see, if I don't keep the notes, I'm not going to know what color it is. So I, I don't know if you're, are you a tattooer that uses uh, just a really limited palette and just goes back and mixes everything in, yeah. the, in the session? Yeah. Oh uh, yeah, I'll try to. Do you know what? It's yeah. probably a good idea to keep some, keep some notes. Yeah, I, I mean, you know, you, when if, you have yeah. when you have like a client come back and you're working on healed work or something, and you never know. Yeah, you never you know. Tell. Yeah, you can hold the bottle up next to it when it's in, been in the skin for a year, and and literally question whether it was this one or that one. Sometimes. Yeah. So holding my finger on it will select the color. It's uh, another little trick there. <laughs> yeah. Sliding the top as we start to go to the kind of the light areas, how it will catch its face. And kind of a nice like area here, I'd say, just under the eye. Hmm. Just it gives the yeah. kind of different shape, like different light sections. This is a really fun way to work. So then when I come into here and start to darken up some of the areas I kind of want to mold now. Do you find yourself coloring in designs before you tattoo them or do you just sort of rely on your, um, your experience at this point? How often do you do a full color study for a tattoo? Quite often, actually. Yeah. The, say the fox that I showed you, the tattoo with all the mushrooms, I did a full illustration of that and uh, it's down to, it's always down to time, you know, um, how much time that you've got, but I will try and get a study done because it, it makes the tattoo time easier. It makes right. that the hardest part way easier, you know, that uh, my brain doesn't have to figure out on what inks and, you know, what colors are going to work with each other. And you never want that idea of like after you've done a tattoo where you go, oh, I wish I never used that color, <laughs> you know, so you can kind of see it before. I'm just going to go and just throw a different color in there. I'm going to change the gray under here for a bit of like a green. 
just to oh, give okay. it like a different un underlift. Nice. Are you someone that ever just changes the colors later using um, the uh, hue saturation? Yeah. Method. Yeah. I do that quite a lot, to be fair. Yeah. Such a nice way to go. Yeah, that's really interesting. Never would have thought to try that color there, but it works. Yeah, and sometimes instead of using black, using like the dark green in them can work as well. So if I keep that as my, like, this is my base layer. Okay, so we're starting to take a shape. But what I'm going to do now is I'm going to select a layer on top. And this is where the kind of capturing the um, colors kind of comes into play. I'll use a, um, I normally use for illustrations, soft pastel because it gives it that kind of like sketch look. Yeah. You know, um, but I also think that sometimes it looks like needle marks. So it replicates tattoos quite well, you know, where you get the kind of mix of the needle dots when you're, mm -hmm. you know, shading or whatever. So, right. Like what that, I'm doing yeah. is I'm selecting the colors and I'm creating a highlight for them now to pick out some other areas. Right, so you were get... careful to to leave room to go a little bit lighter in some of the parts with your first pass so that you could do this on top, right? Yeah, and then a way that I translate it to tattoos so that it's not too, too light, I will duplicate all the layers mm -hmm. so that it appears darker on the screen, but it still looks bright. I'll show you afterwards. But okay. with that light source, say with the fox that I did, I, I duplicated the layers so that when I used, a, say, a green that looks really kind of electric and neon in the, in the um, design, it's actually quite a straight green out of the bottle so that I can know that it will work, you know. I don't like any surprises when I'm <laughs> tattooing. Can't blame you there. Yeah. All right, to our live viewers, thanks for joining us. This is Mike Stockings from the UK, and he just came out with his new brush set with Tattoo Smart called Animal Crackers Volume One. And if you're just joining us, we've already gone through and shown a lot of the designs in the set and Mike is just going through and coloring one of the men and teaching us a little bit about how he approaches rendering his designs in Procreate. So thanks for sticking around. If you guys have any questions that you would like for us to direct to Mike, just throw them up in the chat room and we'll try to get to them. Thanks for joining us. We have a suggestion, a brush suggestion from Gorilla on Skates. They say the spray paints medium nozzle works well for giving it the yeah. tattooed look also. Is that one you've yeah, tried? Yeah, that is true. Yeah. Yeah, I do use that as well. Because it gives that kind of dot speckled kind of look. Mm -hmm. It's still kind of airbrushy in this. Is that the one right there? This is the brush, yeah. 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 
and he gives oh, that okay. kind of yeah dots oh just, yeah look at that yeah but yeah like this kind of gives the same kind of effect but a bit more i guess it looks a little bit more rougher kind of like a tattoo mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. what was the brush that you're currently using so the, the brush that i'm using preferred? is in sketching and it's called soft pastel okay got it what is the um what does the grain look like on that one can you open it up okay it's hard to tell on the screen anyway our resolution is kind of low it's it's okay yeah Don't worry it kind about of it. looks like um best way to describe it is like if you had high um watercolor paper and you rubbed mm -hmm. charcoal across it oh yeah that's exactly what it is yeah you can yeah. see it right there yeah and I've got to get you using my set called the Spit Shade set. It's got some really great watercolor textures in it. Yeah, I think that I, I, that would be interesting. You know, it would be cool to do a video with one of one of the sets. Yeah, we'll do that again sometime. I think I have some of the sets now. Let me just get this. Spit shader. Yeah. So try try the one called Magic Spit Shader. Oh yeah, this is nice. Oh, it's very it. pressure sensitive, so you're gonna see um, the harder you press, the kind of more you know intense oh, it gets yeah. real quick. But it gives you that's, that that yeah, spit shader nice. edge, that paper texture. Yeah. Oh, and the the texture disappears the lighter you do. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot going on in that brush. Okay, let's use this one. Only if you like it. I don't want to mess up your process. I'm on the wrong layer, that's why. Right. <laughs> cool. So, so while, while Mike is figuring out how that brush works, I'm going to mention the fact that we have a discount code on Animal Crackers. It's good until September 1st. So if you're watching this live or you're watching this uh, within the next day or two, you still have a chance to go use Animal Crackers 15 to get 15% off Animal Crackers. If you miss that deal, there's always going to be a pop-up that hits you when you get to Tattoo Smart that asks you to give us your email address so we can send you some really amazing marketing emails, which we would love to be able to send you. So if you want 15% off on your first order and you're missing out on this chance to get this discount code here, you can always just let us have your email address and we promise not to uh, annoy you. We try to send really nice emails with things you'd be interested in. So sign up for our newsletter and get 15% off at Tattoo Smart or just use the code ANIMALCRACKERS15 if you're watching this before September 1st. All right, commercial over. The, um, the ink the set is picking up some of the colors. Mm -hmm. Oh, is the, uh, is the brush acting different than you expect? Yeah, because it's, um, well, let me see this one. It's picking out the highlights of the colors. Is mm -hmm. it because it's too light, this one? Let me see. Which one are you using? I just changed it now. I was using the Magic Spit Shader. Um, so let's say here, go green and it will pick out the highlight oh right yeah that's wild i think that i think there's settings in the brushes on the spit shade set that really make it ideal for the the process on the spit shade set papers oh yeah because this one that might be paper. yeah i think i think that's probably what it is those brushes are you know really highly tuned to work with with that process Sorry about that. Didn't mean to mislead you. <laughs> no, that's fine. Go back to uh, what you're comfortable with. We'll play around with those a uh, different time. So the colors that I'll kind of use, the palette, well, I, I would try to use kind of like dark and muted so that we can use like a really strong color to kind of frame it. 
Right. That would be kind of ideal, you know, like to to get in like a really punchy color that pushes all this forward. Mm -hmm. Which I'll kind of decide on doing a second. Gorilla on Skate says the Spit Shade set is my all time favorite set. I love to hear it. Brought back the fun of painting watercolor without the hassle of setting them all up and putting them all away after 10 minutes for a walk in. True <laughs> that. Yeah. <laughs> it is a lot of fun. And uh, as well, the, the stuff that people create with it, it looks exactly like it would in real life, like a, as a real watercolor. You know, the, the study in the paper, the, yeah. how the brushes act with the paper, it's really well done. I've got it. Um, I've got it pulled up here. This is just. I'm gonna. I'm gonna take over your screen for a second. Show the. Uh, it's just one of the papers. There's a lot of different paper files in here, but the um, the stains that are on the papers. These are real coffee and tea stains. These are actual. You know, papers that were were stained. And then when you open up the set, you've got all the layers here. And this is why that that brush was set to work a different way because the layer settings that are in here in the set are set to darken and not to normal. Like Mike's uh, using normal layer setting. Uh, but these yeah. brushes were made set to darken. And the reason is, is because we're trying to get the paint to behave the same way that it does when you're actually watercolor painting. So they're transparent and um, mm -hmm. you know the way that the colors sit on top of each other where what Mike's doing is more like, um, I think more like an opaque medium, like something like a, like pastel or, you know, like a gouache or something that's going to, you know, cover up whatever you put underneath it. Or does that make sense? Right. Like the, yeah. the um, you, you have the ability with these brushes you're using to always cover what was underneath. Whereas with tattoo ink or with watercolor paint, you might not have that opacity in the color. The best kind of tool, like I go back and forth, is the color wheel. Like, is you know, instead of areas where you have to use black, you know, you can really go down the grays and mm -hmm. you know try and get them to go sure. close to black, but not distract from like you know we've got those kind of distinct leopard spots, you know. Right. You kind of want to keep that going. But even then, you're still staying in the same family with that original kind of golden color that you used yeah. as the base color. And that's what's giving it this sort of nice harmony. I had a, um artist at the shop the other day that he had done this illustration on his iPad and he was going to tattoo it. And there was this, you know, color in the piece that he was asking me, like, how how do I mix that color, Russ? Like, how do I, how do I even figure out what color that is? And I think when you are looking at grays, you can't really always tell if it's leaning towards yellow or if it's leaning towards blue or red, because it's just really hard to tell. But if you kind of reverse engineer it, like if you color select one of those grays, like around the neck, um, for example, and then you open up the color wheel, you can see that it's based on that, that yellow. And then you can kind of know if I, take you know like mike would you try color selecting um a gray from the neck with your finger right so you can see that gray is rooted in that yellow and then that would kind of give you a clue as to how you might mix that color up yeah because yeah you can just kind of see the yeah exactly so you look up in the upper right corner where it's that pure variation of yellow and you're like okay it's kind of orange yellow what happens yeah. if i take that medium gray and mix it with orange yellow a little black a little bit of white see if you can achieve the same exact color with tattoo ink it's a really useful tool sometimes when you're just yeah, trying no, to figure I out i always how to do it afterwards it. i'll tap an area and just make a you know a color plan so you can see right. that there's you know like here you can see that that green looks quite light you know, and then when you pull it out, it's actually quite dark. Right. Next to white. But in our piece, it you know, it's coming across quite light, you know. Right, yeah. 
but it's always kind of Helpful. found him. Right, so I've created a another layer. I've gone back to using yeah. a technical drawing pen. And now this is a another area where I kind of select colors. We're going to do some gums. I want them to be in that kind of pinky family without them being mm. too separate. So again, I'm going to pick like a, a medium. Right. Let's see what we have. And we're going to go straight under the ear. Anything that's to do with the mouth, apart from the teeth. Isolate them, basically, of the areas that you don't want done. So go around them. You don't even have to be clean about the black because you'll just be underneath the black, right? Yeah. We seem to have entered a, uh, a water section of the ambient music. <laughs> I hope it's not making you want to go to the bathroom. <laughs> yeah. right, let's see if we can drop these colors in. Again, Easy. we can ignore the whiskers because I mean, it's not part of it yet. And we'll do the nose in this family of colors as well. So yeah, a bit of a goofy mouth at the moment. Right, so alpha lock it again. Now I want to really airbrush these shades, like to give, you know, the light source, to, to get this to make more sense, this has to make sense with the lighting. So obviously there'll be shadow more from the top and there might be light catching here. If we look at the light kind of going down in the source this way. So I'm going to just keep adding, even if it gets to near black. If that looks too dark on your side. Going for a layer on top, selecting this layer. I'm going to start to go for. Like these on. I don't know if you can hear my neighbors in the background. Can you hear them? I don't know. I hear the um, the subtle ambient music more. Than okay, anything. cool. They're being very loud. <laughs> As neighbors are prone to do. Yeah. So cool. All right, let me get Yeah, that's looking good. Here. And when you're tattooing it, do you approach the uh, the highlight in a different way? Do you actually kind of leave space to put yeah. that in with like a like a round shader or something? Or what's your yeah? I'll, I'll leave space. That's the thing about sometimes 
illustration work and translating it to tattooing can be hard because uh, you, there's so much you can do with an iPad that you can't right. do on skin. Some of the blends and some of the, you know, say if we were going to do like really smooth blends in these whiskers or something realistically in a tattoo, it's not going to look as smooth as, you know, on um, the iPad. So I try yeah. and keep it realistic. That's why like, I'd like to use those, some of the brushes that would make sense to, you know, um, translate well with tattooing. Right. While your neighbors are making all that noise, my um, AC just kicked on, and it's just on the other side of the uh, the wall. The furnace AC unit is right there, so uh, hopefully you can still hear me, okay? Yeah, I can. Yeah, I can't hear okay. any noise. Okay, good. Right, so with the teeth, alpha locking. So this is a middle ground for the teeth, so. And do a higher where the light will kind of catch these. And again, with tackling these, giving them a darker edge. These will kind of be completely shaded, really. Coming in, and we can even select a darker, not black but just enough to kind of hide and keep it at the... So it looks like that mouth section is getting um, darker. So how is the world your end, Russ? Is it back to normal? It's strange. You know, I think that um, it's it's getting bad here again. You know, there's a lot of people that were vaccinated that are now getting COVID, right? And I guess they're not getting as sick and they're not necessarily ending up in the hospital if they were vaccinated, but they're still getting it. Yeah. I know a few people. Here. Yeah. I know a few people that were um you know in my neighborhood that were vaccinated and some adults that are getting it and you know they sent our kids all back to school just uh, a couple of weeks ago and that was I think what really kicked it off because you know they're not really uh they're not really doing a great job of wearing the masks at yeah. school, right? And um you know maybe it wouldn't work anyway. So at this point, it just seems like, you know, it's it just, it is what it is, but, um, we're keeping an eye on it. You know, we're, um, trying to, uh, do the best that we can, you know, to keep things going at the shop, but to keep, you know, the safety there as well. That's all you can really do, isn't it? Like, yeah. It's kind of out it's a situation out of everyone's control yeah well there is a vaccine you know and people can get it here there's just a lot of people that don't want to get it here yeah it's the same and, yeah. um that's on them i guess you know so so it's it's, it's just sort of in a weird in-between stage but i you know i feel like parts of europe will end up going on lockdown again what do you think about that is that is that what you're hearing or I hope not, but I've, <laughs> right. it's kind of 
going that way, isn't it? There's a lot of, you know, there's the cases rising again and stuff. And I think our government doesn't want to lock down again. We're just cracking on. Yeah. <laughs> just going at it. <laughs> it's, a, it's a difficult one for me because I had like nine months off because of it. You know, it was right. You know, I don't. I really don't want to have another lockdown, but. You know, it's one of those things where it's just like, when will it end, you know? I'm going to a, uh, a tattoo conference. It's called Explorer Tattoo Conference. It's in, uh, I guess, about eight or nine days. It's in, oh, yeah. uh, Dall in Dallas, Texas. And um, a big group of artists from Ink and Dagger, my shop, are going out there and it's a three-day conference. I'm one of the uh, keynote speakers, and there's going to be uh, just basically three days of seminars. That's cool. And uh, I'm just I'm so excited to be, you know, around tattooers in public again. It's uh, it's it's really awesome. But I think we're all going to be, you know, under a mask mandate in Dallas, so everybody will be. Uh, masked up <laughs> kind of used to it here now you know yeah right okay so larry color for the background all right it's the moment of truth what do we go for so So another tip, draw in a circle, hold the pen, it will create a circle, tap your finger and it'll create a perfect circle. Perfect. Yeah. Then we go into red, but let's see if this eye wants to be a different color. I think it does. We go. Good faith would like us to know that they can hear the neighbors. Yeah, they're like. Mm -hmm. Let me, I'm going to turn. I'm going to turn the music <laughs> off so we can really isolate the sound of neighbors from the ambient music. Let's see what we got. That sounds like they're dying, man. Is there a dog? <laughs> it's, it's gross to listen to. <laughs> Maybe they're watching us live right now on YouTube. I'm sure they're following you on Instagram. And... Yeah. She, it's actually a, um, someone I know. But, uh, she actually did some... We had a Halloween event, and she's an artist, and she carves... She makes really good hand-carved pumpkins... When Halloween comes around, all the kids oh, wow. in the neighborhood go to her house. Nice. And they're like, she'll do like, you know, portraits of people and stuff like that. And it's mad. So she did us this whole like stack for our like a Halloween event. We did like a charity event. And uh, yeah, they come, they come out really, really good. So, okay. We give her a break when she wants to be loud sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> It's nice to have neighbors that you like being around. I've got some awesome neighbors myself. Man, that is looking so good. I'm glad I asked you to color this one in. All right, let's try some different music. Let's see what else do they have. That was ambient. Let's switch to chill. What do you think? Yeah, it's pretty chill. Here comes, here comes chill. <laughs> Let's 
I don't hear anything. Do you hear a chill? I don't hear any it's chill. So chill. It's that's the definition of chill. <laughs> I guess. It comes on really slow. It lures you in like a sweet lullaby. Yeah, there's nothing. So, Mike, is this pretty much the end? When you do the uh, the white whiskers, does that mean it's almost over? Yeah, there's some other white highlights, but yeah, yeah, I would say so. Can Have you switched away from white? Looks like you've got something a little gray now. It's this is gray. Yeah, it's yeah. more on the white side of gray, so that mm -hmm. I can do some then extra kind of white highlights there. Oh, okay. And they can really stand out. Sometimes I hate that kind of overlook here with the white, you know. Mm -hmm. And sometimes, like in illustrations and with, with tattoos, white always looks good because white in the skin, people are like, whoa, you know. Right. So we kind of, you know, hold that together with it. But when I'm doing illustrations, sometimes, sometimes white doesn't look so great with it. Like sometimes I'll work with a background that's like gray because it mm -hmm. kind of shows me a bit more of the true, the colors look different to me, you know, when that, that gray is off next to it. So this is starting to appear to look white. Right. It's not, it's. Yeah. Yeah, this chill music is really chill. I'm going to turn it up a little bit and see if we can hear it. I hear nothing. All right. I'm going to pick some different music. You let us down, chill. All right. So this is our choice. We have hip hop, lo-fi, pop, rock, metal, or classical. Ooh. I'm kind of scared to hear what rock metal would be yeah. or pop. <laughs> Let's try lo-fi hip-hop. Yeah. We had to vote for classical. This is very lo-fi hip hop. I think that their goal with all of this music is to be better background music than foreground music, but here we are. Now it's going. Now it's going, yeah, I can hear it now. Yeah, I turned it up a little bit. I felt like we were heading towards sort of a, a crescendo moment with this drawing and I wanted the uh, musical accompaniment to uh, you know, just go along with the energy and the excitement of seeing you put in these white highlights. This is super satisfying. So Mike, while we still have everyone's attention, is there anything that you would like for them to know? Any um, links or tips or messages that you would like to deliver? Um, hmm. I, I think the, the main focus is like, right, okay, this is a little tip then. This is what I was trying to say earlier. I'm trying to pick like, Say I'm coming to a tattoo and I'm looking at this color selection and I'm grabbing this color and obviously you want it to correlate to like tattoo in products that you have. So other inks and stuff, press the color and you, you kind of relate, okay, well, what color do I have that looks like that? It looks like an ochre kind of color from, you know, a certain brand you might have laying around. Sometimes when I work with colors that are so light, sometimes tattoo ink it's harder to do light, you know. Um, so what I'll do is I'll duplicate all the colors and then multiply them. So it creates a really dark version. Oh, of wow. The tattoo. Okay. But then I'll grab 
the opacity and drag it down to then when the color that we grabbed before it was quite bright now if i touch it it will be darker than before mm -hmm. the reason why i do that is because darker colors work i feel with um tattoo inks like it gives the image that this is bright. Say this yellow then, it doesn't have to be like a white yellow to give it that pop look, like, because it's quite a straight yellow. Right. Overall, you know, you're not chasing the whiting out of the colors anymore. You can use a color straight from the bottle by darkening in the other colors, you know? So then this green becomes like quite a dark blacky green you know, and here you can kind of see that they're quite dark colors. That's like a tip that I've been kind of giving out and using recently because I've found that it works really well with my with my kind of process with how I'll translate colors to look bright and vivid and what people would think like, oh, that's bright. It must have white in it and it doesn't then you yeah. can add minimal amounts of whites just to the edge and it really explodes with this kind of white look you know sure um i feel like a, you know myself it happened really quick i'm not sure if i exactly saw what you were doing would you mind just kind of showing that process again starting with when you combined all the layers together because so, i'm sure people don't even know that part oh yeah okay so let's go right back to what i did So I had all my layers set out. Yeah. So now that I've finished the design, I've kind of just pinched all of these, squeezed them all together, and it creates one layer. So this one layer, what I can do to it is now, say if I want to do them true colors to a leopard. So my customer has said, I want to do these, right? But I'm finding these colors a bit too bright when I'm translating them to tattoo colors. So I slide to the right, I duplicate the layer, and then with uh, pressing N here, N is standing for normal, which is there. So I drag it to multiply. This is multiplying the layer. Um, and all the colors over the top. So it's given now like a dark look and you can see it's kind of given that really strong light kind of look. Right. Too strong. So I grab this bar down to where I want it to kind of be for my palette. So say if I grab it down to half, let's put it to half. Yeah. Yeah. And so now it's created the images slightly darker. Um, so that when I'm translating it with ink that I have, I don't have to white everything out. Yeah. So that I can kind of view it, use it true to the bottle or, you know, just mix it with black, which I find some hard sometimes is a lot easier than mixing with white all the time. So there's that, or I can also look at it as like, come onto the, is it here? Or is it? Oh no. In a, this kind of magic it looks like a magic wand, right? Like a right. I'll grab the the hue, saturation, and brightness, and then I can kind of just play with the colors to go. Okay, let's do electric green. It's going right. to keep the tones in. Oh wow! Say this, yeah, like that it looks cool. great. So when I do this for customers, they'll be like, wow, yeah, let's just do it green, you know, because you can give, really give that perspective. You notice all these colors have now changed, you know? Yeah. And again, if I like, if I'm looking at this and I'm going, oh, that's, that's definitely a spearmint color, but it's so bright, you know, mm -hmm. I'll duplicate the layer, multiply it now, dragging it down. And now it's, it's still a spearmint color, but you can, well, I don't know if you can see on there. Mm -hmm you can see how it's darker than my yeah. first select it's more pure yeah yeah which would be something more that you could find easily in an ink set you yeah. know it would be Without a having to ring. add so much white to it that it might not you know really hold yeah. up over time or might not exactly. work on that client's skin tone exactly That's a really great yeah. tip 
it's an interesting perspective that I haven't seen before. So thanks for sharing that. So yeah, the hues is quite a nice thing. Do you know, I actually found a lot of my kind of style of stuff when you're messing around with clients and, you know, looking through stuff and, you know, we were going through the colors and I was like, oh, well, you can, you know, do it this color or you can, we can do it like this or we could just do it all red, for example. And we looked at it together mm -hmm. when it, it was kind of like the blue that we had here. Like we went, um, the greeny blue, we like went over to it and was like, oh, that looks really cool. And then my customer was like, it does look really cool. And I just ended up doing animals all in this kind of like just one red tone. And um, yeah, it kicked off a nice little style for me then, you know, yeah. that everyone coming in is like, I just want to do have these red animals. And I was like, right. so good. I just have one bottle of red, one bottle <laughs> of black and some white. So it's <laughs> awesome. That is really, really rad, says Good Faith. Good Faith, I appreciate all the comments today. Thanks for um, staying with us in the chat room. Yeah, thank you. We're going we're gonna to wrap this up in the next few minutes. So if we have any final questions or comments or anything that you guys would like to throw in the chat room, now's your chance. I would uh, just like to add how grateful I am to Mike for making this set with us at Tattoo Smart and for also coming on here. I know it's late for you there. It's probably getting past bedtime at this point. So I appreciate you uh, hanging out so late and teaching us today. No, thank you. It's been a, it's been an honor to work with you and to get this brush set out. I can't wait to see. I mean, if anyone gets it, so make sure they like tag me and see what they can produce with their, either their art on their iPads or their tattoos. It'll be really interesting to see the, uh, you know, the process that people can create themselves just by having a little little guidance you know with the with the set yeah totally man our our customers are um really great about hashtagging made with tattoo smart so if you start following that hashtag you can start to see a lot of um work that people are making with with tattoo smart stuff in general and hopefully they'll remember to tag you as well if they end up posting something up um we always love seeing that so keep the tags coming guys I am watching the chat room, not seeing much else happening in there. So it looks like everyone is uh, kind of calling it a night. One more, one more. We got a thanks, Mike. Love your work. Gorilla on skates. Yes, you were in the chat room a lot tonight. Really appreciate you being here. Oh, we have a question. Let's get it up here. When using colors with added white, do you feel the need for plain white highlights or just use the tone you made yourself as a highlight also? I had learned an interesting tip from um, actually Timmy B when I was working in New York. Okay. Um, he, I, and I've kind of always kind of stepped to it. Like there's, uh, I will kind of cut colors with a whitish version of a color. So say like white, I'll have like an off-white bottle or like a, a gray white to mute the color or say like a pistachio white, right? The reason for this is so that say if I go from gray, I can add like off white to it. It's not pure white, but it will wipe the color out so that when I come to doing a pure white highlight, that that white is still separate. Yeah. You know, one extra so, level of whiteness. Yeah. yeah, I got that. That's great. Yeah, I've seen Timmy B uh, teach that as seminars at Explorer. Uh, George has a question. Um, how can you printer and scale your image? I think that the question has to do with a question a lot of people have is, you know, how do I get this out of my iPad and turn it into a tattoo? Um, yeah. Do you have any um, special tricks for that? It seems like most of the designs you're doing are probably going to fit on a single piece of stencil paper, right? So, yeah. Um, I'll sh I'll show you some of my designs here. Like, say where I've done this. This is a typical page of what my designs will look like. Right. So I've used the the tone in. Um, I don't know if you can see that, but the brush marks kind of what we've mm -hmm. used for the other image. 
I've created a color palette next to it with just selecting the photos. That's just for visuals, so it keeps time with customers. But say, like the lines, I actually do them in a, a sketch kind of style. Mm -hmm. And the reason why I do this is sometimes I don't like the um, stencil to be so solid, you know, that it will... Um, I, I can know where to do kind of thinner lines by judging by the sketch line. As you see, it goes like mm -hmm. fat to thin. And it also gives me a direction of light because I did these glowing from the inside. So it kind of looks like it, it will go in and then disappear. Yeah. I keep the stencils kind of loose. But... Do you feel like that gives you a little bit more freedom when you're doing the tattoo to just sort of, you know, continue to be creative? Um, yeah, exactly. Yeah. It, it gives it more of like it's on and it's it's open for interpretation still, you know. Mm -hmm. um, but I will still do with like a plan. So these are like some tattoos I've been doing in the week. You know, there there will be like a, a color plan that I will do um, prior. Um, but yeah, I would say that. I mean, for this, you will see that it'll be like a solid. You know the line work that's going to go in as a stencil then obviously working dark to light um but i think also taking it's important to kind of take pictures and have a section in your um on your ipad where you can see you know um what it will look like on someone's arm you know because there might be some other tattoos around it this is some trouble you run into sometimes like You've got an area for a tattoo that's perfect. You have done a design for it, but it doesn't really match with anything you want around um, that they've already got pre-existing. Some colors can really like look leery to another color and it can be off-putting, you know? So I always make sure I kind of Photoshop this in. If I have some, a picture, of, I don't have, you know, one right now, but if I had some of someone's hand, say, and they had some tattoos up to their wrist, I would make sure that I put this on, have a look at it, and make sure that these colors aren't going to look too ugly next to the others when I'm creating a plan. You know, I think that goes a long way with how uh, a good etiquette for your customers and, you know, to also have that feeling of just like tattoos aren't just for you to kind of create and just throw on people like graffiti on a wall sometimes. I know it can be that way, but I know that a customer kind of looks at their body all as one, you know, so mm -hmm. you kind of want to keep in with what they want um yeah i'll say mostly that right on let's see we've got a couple of more questions here have you plans for making a frame brush set for traditional flash i'm not sure if that question is for me or for mike um but i would say in general tattoo smart is always coming up with new ideas for brush sets and um definitely frames are on the list i think um we'll probably see some really exciting stuff going in that direction really soon so be on the lookout for that and our other question for mike is do you have a youtube channel where you do stuff like this i'm going to give you a follow on ig so yeah not a, a youtube channel i i do run a patreon um, I will be posting it on my page soon just because I was doing it for a while and then I took on kind of too much to do. So I just wanted to make sure all the videos were kind of really decent quality that I can run through like designs like this and, you know, talk about different styles and do this and, and not take up all of my time like it was before. So I've tweaked, I'm just tweaking a couple of bits and it will be out this month. So if you follow me on Instagram, then you'll definitely see you know where to look to see these tutorials it's basically it's a kind of a more in depth version of of what i'm doing today like i will you know talk about colors and uh, i also do like how to sketch designs like this from beginning you know like uh so it's a lot more in depth some some videos were two parts because they're so long you know but it's really good for someone who's like, A, if they're trying to get a, like a tattoo portfolio together, you know, that can even working with kind of the brush sets that I've done on Tattoo Smart, I've done some videos of them 
before, you know, where you can you can see how the sets are made almost. Like there was an example where I did like a, a snake design. And then at the end, I showed you like the the brush sets and stuff and how you can kind of relate that to making it a bit easier, but having the knowledge behind of doing, I can do this for myself, but I just want to get some flow down. And you know, these, these brushes are like help a lot. Um, also for like maybe illustrators, first time illustrators, or, you know, people that just want to have fun, really, I'm just, I'm going to make it quite cheap. So and everyone can get involved and, you know, hopefully we can, I like it before I had a lot of patrons, like kind of tagging me online and, you know, doing the photos and we ran some competitions with Tattoo Smart to win brushes and stuff. So it's all good fun, but yeah, I'll post it on, um, my Instagram and you'll definitely see a lot of that soon. All right, Gorilla on Skate says they just grabbed the brush set. Thanks for all the hard work you and others have put into the Tattoo Smart page and brush sets. They've changed how we tattoo forever. Awesome. Yeah. Nice. Thank you. I hope you enjoy Good the set. And uh, thanks for all the love. Thanks for hanging out. We've got a few more messages coming through and then we'll wrap it up. Dang, Russ, looking rad. I, I don't know if you're talking about the, uh, the design or my shirt or whatever, but uh, thanks. <laughs> it's the shirt. No, <laughs> yeah, it's probably the shirt. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, cool. Thanks for uh, hanging out with us, guys. We appreciate you uh, showing up and being a part of this live stream. Thanks again to Mike Stockings. And uh, we'll try to be back with more live soon. It was way too long since our last one. So um, I'm going to make a commitment right now to be back sometime within the next 30 days for another live stream. So make sure you're... Um, subscribing to our YouTube channel so that you get the notifications and uh, subscribe to our mailing list and everything as well. Go follow Mike Stockings on Instagram and uh, tag him whenever you use the set so we can see what you're making with it. All right. Yeah, that'd be cool. All right. Signing off. Thanks again.